So our guest for this video, her name is Juliana, but we're going to call her Juli. Yeah. So we're going to talk about how it is to be a working student. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for this wonderful invitation. And I admire you. And I'm so happy to share this moment with, with you and with everyone who is watching this, this video. Um, okay, I am from Colombia. While I was in Colombia in ninth uh, grade in high school, I wanted to um, study, um, I wanted to be a professional dancer. Mm -hmm. So what I did was that I was searching in Google about the best dance university in the world. And then Google gave me uh, Juilliard, uh, Juilliard University in New York. Uh, that was amazing. It is a great university. It is very, very, very expensive. And they were asking me, if you want to be part of this university, you have to have money. <laughs> you have to speak English and you have to know how to dance belly. I didn't have any of those. So I had a huge faith. So I think it is enough and it has been enough. So uh, I was with that dream, okay, how can I go to the United States? How can I learn English? How can I learn ballet? So please, God, if you want this to me, just guide me and just open the doors. So he did it. My pastor, um, is my woman, past, woman pastor, yes. she told my mom, thank you. <laughs> she told my mom, hey, there is this opportunity for Huli. She can travel uh, to the United States as an au pair. And Oprah is a person who um, lives in a host family in the United States and takes care of the of their children. And at the same time, that person, that Oprah, is uh, improving her English and living the experience, you know, being in the United States. So with my family, we were praying about it. The same prayer. I think that has been the same prayer uh, for my life. God, open the door. Open the door. Mm -hmm. If it is this is what you want for us, just open the door. He did it. He has been so, so, so faithful. And now I have been living in the United States uh, since January of this year. And when I came here, I was so excited. There were many things to do. Um, um, I was meeting new people. I was uh, speaking in English all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, speaking or talking. I always have that question. It's okay. Either one is fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I was speaking in English at the time and I was like living the experience. Okay. Um, but then our friend COVID came and he was like, go back home. <laughs> so there was a time as season during this year when I was just working with the kids, taking care of them. And then in my room, working with the kids, in my room working with the kids in my room and I was like god I want to study I want to um to be useful in your in your hands to get ready to to get knowledge you know I want to get ready to be useful in your hands but I don't know where to study with this COVID around us and all of this chaos around us I don't know where to study or what to study um and then my mom called me um and she was like hey holy do you remember that our church, G12 uh, church, Misión Carismática Internacional in Spanish, um, it, they have our church, they have like a kind of relationship with uh, Oral Roberts University. And I was like, oh, yes. And she told me, call them. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to call them. And the person who answered, um, she has been such a great blessing for me. She's from Colombia. so. She told me all the information about the program, about the university, and in uh, Spanish. So it was great. I knew how to speak English, but we were talking with Rachel. It is sometimes better when you can receive even more information when someone is talking in the, your language. Yeah. So it was great. And there was a scholarship. And I think Rachel and I were the the privilege of having the same scholarship and they are Roberts, um, the university, they have this a major international business and ministry. And I was like, this is the 
perfect thing for me because I love business. I love working with people. I will, I love serving. Uh, I love using my, my leadership, my, my skills in, in God's purpose, but also it was ministry. So it was international business and ministry and the perfect um, combination for me to mm -hmm. do God's business around the world. So yeah. I just love that thing and now studying online in the, in a bachelor in science, um, majoring in international business <laughs> here at ORU. O -R -U. Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. So thank you for sharing your story. So for our second question, what is it like living on your own and managing your school and your work? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it has been um, such a big challenge for me. Um, oh, man. So, I mean, I'm not living on my own well, because yeah. I'm living with a host family. Mm -hmm. So, basically, I have everything I need. I have my food. I don't have to be worried about um, bills. I don't have yeah. to be worried about like things. I just have to work with the kids, do, do a, such a great job with them mm -hmm. and keep my room clean. I mean, yeah. that is and my laundry, which is not such an amazing thing <laughs> that I have to do. <laughs> um, so I just do that. And, uh, but even though being far for, from my family, it has been hard. Sometimes um, when dad comes home, my host dad comes home or my husband, they come home. They, their kids are like, ah, daddy, mommy. And everyone is giving hugs. And I'm like this, hi, Hello, <laughs> how was your day? And it's amazing because my host family is amazing. They have been blessing my life a lot during this year. Uh, but even though sometimes you miss a hug from your mom, or from your dad or from I have a little brother his name is David he's 17 years old and you miss them so that has been hard but that has been teaching me how to follow God in a person personal way you yeah. know because sometimes I think that as a Christian person I, I have been Christian all, all my life we just use our family as a bridge to connect <sighs> with God yeah. and now here in the United States I don't have any more that bridge I have to uh, seek his presence by my own so it has been amazing um and working at the same time if you're working and study please make a schedule and be faithful to that schedule is that correct faithful? yeah faithful. be faithful to that schedule if you say i'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m at that time but that means that you have to go um to bed early, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think something that we do, and I was doing, it was very, very bad for me. I was working all day and I, I, I was getting tired. So during the day I was taking some naps. So I was using every evening to do my work, school work. I was not sleeping at all. And then some days I was with the kids like this. <laughs> and I was doing homework like this. <laughs> when my parents were calling me from Colombia, I was like this. <laughs> and they're like, no more, stop it. You have to um, make your own schedule and be faithful to that schedule. Mm -hmm. It is not impossible. If God give us, uh, gives us 24 hours, we have eight hours to sleep. Mm -hmm. what, what it means is the rest of the hours, we have to give our 100%. We have to be 100% productive and then we yeah. can sleep eight hours if we are not 100 percent productive in the rest of the day so we're just wasting our time i'm telling you this it is easier to just say it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's another thing to do it i have been trying to do it but we have to have rest and you know because if we're christians we have to represent jesus in everything we do not just at church Amen. So you represent uh, jesus at everything we do we have to sleep and we have to be healthy and, and yeah. organized. Mm -hmm. That is so true. And every day you do that is a day of progress. You're always growing when you choose to do that. Thank you for sharing that. It's something that we have to apply. It's very hard. <laughs> it's 
Me too. <laughs> yeah, but very good reminder. So for our next question, how do you study or do your schoolwork? Do you have any tips or like you, you mentioned being faithful to your schedule? So that would be other, one. Yeah, tips that you could so Two more would be, um, I mean, my host mom, she's the doctor and she told me, Huli, I'm like an old school a person and I just take notes, a pen mm -hmm. and my book. Um, when I, um, I started college in August, yeah. so I found that when I write my notes on the laptop, uh, I, when I type my, my notes, you know, yeah. from school, uh, <laughs> there is an option where, where you can search a word. You just write like business and then that, uh, gives you all the parts of your notes where you wrote business. Oh yeah. So, well, that helps me a lot to to find things quicker and to do it do my homework quicker. But I realized that while I was doing that, while I was typing, I, I can type very fast, and I'm not thinking in, in what I'm typing. I'm just thinking in chocolate cookies. <laughs> you know, it's just I'm not really paying attention. But this time, I, she told me that, and I was like, okay let's do it so i'm just taking all my notes here in this huge notebook with markets and, and colors you know uh and has, that has been great for me because i can see how can i can um keep in my mind more knowledge and more mm. i'm really paying attention to what i'm yeah. doing and the third uh, thing for me will third tip will mm -hmm. be that as I'm, I'm studying in an other language, you know, it is not Spanish, it is in English. Um, when I read, I, we have to read a lot of books and we have to read papers and many, many. <laughs> um, and what I do is, if you have the option to listen the audio at the same mm -hmm. time, yeah, and read, that is great because your mind, your eyes, your ears, everything is focusing on your paper. So if you can do it, just do it. Or if you can, if it's, if you're reading in your, uh, how do you say it? In your language, in your, in your own? Yeah, your own language. Mm -hmm. If you're reading in your own language, you just listen some music, some background music and be focused. Sometimes I was thinking, this is my bed and my bed is huge. <laughs> and sometimes I was thinking, okay, I can read my, my books on my bed. <laughs> Two minutes after I was like this. <laughs> so just prepare your moment. If you have a desk, put, put some snacks next to you, put some background music, uh, your notes, your, your pencils, your pens, and just be focused on, on what you want to do. If you put goals, be faithful to those goals and you're going to good to do it to get it i think that's it being a kind of alone without mm -hmm. my family i am not alone at all i have two little kids who are always on my door <laughs> Ole! Ole! <laughs> and i a, a host parents who takes care who take me take care of me very very well who love me and i love them too i have some friends from church here and that has been great but being far from your family and far from your home, it's a kind of hard sometimes. And I think the only, I would say, Huli, seek God first. Put him first every day of your life. Sometimes, I'm just being honest here without any mask. Sometimes I was just very, very tired because working with the kids during the day, then doing homework. And I was not doing my, my, my devotion. I was not um, reading my Bible or praying. And by the end, I was saying, oh, yes, I'm Christian. Hey, I was not living a Christian life. I was just surviving. And sometimes we just allow our troubles and our um, problems to be bigger than God in our lives. And that is a huge mistake in, in, in our lives as, as Christian people. So God, holy keep putting God in the first place and then everything is going to be all right. Even with COVID, even with 
sometimes hard times with another language. Um, God, if God is in the first place, if God is the center of our lives, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah. That is the only thing we did. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so good. My main promise this year has been uh, Genesis 39, 2-4. Ahora bien, el Señor estaba con José y las cosas le salían muy bien. Mientras José vivía en la casa de su patrón egipcio, este se dio cuenta de que el Señor estaba con José y lo hacía prosperar en todo. José se ganó la confianza de Potifar y este lo nombró mayordomo de toda su casa y le confió la administración de todos sus bienes. My turn. <laughs> Your turn. So, this is the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. In Genesis 39, 2 to 4, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> that is the first one. That is like the main. I came to the United States because of that verse. I was asking God, what do you want? Do you want me to go? And then he gave me this promise. And I was like, okay, if you're going to be with me, I will do it. Um, that was the first one. And here <laughs> I have like two uh, notebooks. <laughs> it's okay. We I'm going to highlight. Amen. <laughs> And um, we were talking about these verbs uh, some when we were talking uh, before this video about yes. Isaiah mm. 43, 19, right? It says, voy a hacer algo nuevo, ya está sucediendo, no se dan cuenta, estoy abriendo un camino en el desierto y ríos en lugares mm. desolados. So, find your that. Turn. <laughs> Isaiah uh, 43, chapter yep. 43, verse 19. Help, thank you for helping me. <laughs> no problem. I like hearing it in Spanish. <laughs> so in Isaiah 43, 19, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Amen. Okay. Yeah. That's it. And the last one, I mean, not the last one. I have. There's a lot. <laughs> I mean, all of us, we have this. And so our Bibles, here is everything what we need. Amen. And, um, Isaiah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I didn't write down. Uh, Isaiah chapter, I don't know which okay, chapter, it's okay. but it's a beautiful promise that says, I'm going to read it in, in, in English. Okay. I think is that chapter when Jesus, when they are talking about what is fasting, what is the real meaning of, of fasting. And then after saying, what is the real meaning of fasting? They give us a promise. Mm -hmm. And the promise is um, here. El Señor te guiará siempre, te saciará en tierras resecas y fortalecerá tus huesos. Serás como jardín bien regado, como manantial cuyas aguas no, um, no se agotan. Tu pueblo reconstruirá las ruinas antiguas y levantarán sus cimientos de antaño. Será llamado reparador de muros de ruidos y restaurador de calles transitadas. So basically this promise is that um, God is going to guide you always. And you are going to build new things. What was broken, you are going to rebuild it. Mm. So it has been a, a huge um, blessing. Maybe when you are editing this video, <laughs> oh, I can say yeah. to you uh, the part of the Bible where this verse is. I think that's it. Wow, thank you so much. I am so blessed to have gotten to talk to you. And so I'm also glad that you allowed me to have an opportunity to share to you as well. So thank you so much. I really do hope that more people, when they see this, they will be inspired by your life. 
because every life has their own testimony when god writes yeah. our stories every story is different and it's powerful and it has something different from what other people can also share and so who me your story is definitely going to inspire it inspired me it reminded me of many things so there's a lot of other things we have to work on first is sleep <laughs> yeah <laughs> me too so we're gonna work on that and mm -hmm. i'm so grateful to those who are watching it is possible for god to bring you god-fearing friends this girl we were just classmates for like this is a second subject a second yeah. course that we're classmates in on different sides of the world we never met in person and yet we just found out earlier while talking that God just connected everything and brought us yeah. together. So it is possible to have people in your life that will help you grow and build your life. And you are not alone. So whoever is surviving college by being a working student, know that you're not alone and that it is possible mm -hmm. to not just survive, but to thrive. So plant yourself in the right environment. Seek God first. And thank you for watching this video. Bye. Adios. Bye. <laughs>